Hey guys, this is John Callum from KHL Motorsport and we're making this video to give you guys updates on Project Hyundai Coupe All-Wheel Drive. More specifically on plumbing issues. Not really issues but basically plumbing work that was required or is required to get this car running finally uh, pretty soon. Right, so you guys know that the car is turbocharged. It, you know, the Evo 4 engine is actually a stock turbocharged engine from the factory. Unfortunately, when we got the engine used, uh, the seller did not include the intercooler. So we thought of doing an air-to-water intercooler setup. So that's what we did. Why did we go air-to-water? I mean, let's start first with the disadvantages. Number one, it's a more complex system than an air-to-air -air intercooler. You need to have um, a heat exchanger for the water. Um, and uh, you need, of course, to put lots of water. You need also to put a pump, an electrical pump. And of course, you have to lay down all the hoses to link the intercooler, the charge cooler, I mean the heat exchanger, the pump, and maybe if you want to put a reservoir. So it's a bit more complex because an air-to-air -air intercooler, you just have to put the intercooler and put the charge piping in and out of it. It's relatively simple, it's relatively inexpensive because there are air-to-air -air intercoolers of all over Facebook Marketplace right now you can buy. So that's not a problem, but getting an air-to-water intercooler, that's kind of a rare bird. So we got this huge unit, relatively huge unit uh, from AliExpress. It's based on my estimation, it's rated to about 500 to 550 horsepower um, it's a bit too much for our requirements because we only want it good for about 300 to 350 max anyway bigger is better right or supposedly but the thing about air to water intercoolers if you compare the core core size of the intercooler versus an air to air unit you could get away with a smaller core uh, for the air to water unit the key factor is that you can locate the intercooler inside the engine bay. What that means is um, you could keep your charge piping as short as possible. Very, very, very short. So if you could look at our engine bay, um, the piping is really short. The reason why we made it as short as possible is, of course, to reduce turbo lag. The longer the charge piping, the more the turbo has to give air. Uh, in order to fill up the charge piping volume and provide that uh, boosted air into the engine. If you make that volume as small as possible, that means the turbo can hit uh, slightly faster than normal. Uh, that's going to be a key advantage to our desired use of the car, which is really for the street. You know, so response would be the best thing, especially with the Evo 4 Turbo. But the Evo 4 is the only one that got uh, this small uh, turbine housing. For ultimate power, it's a horrible turbo because um, it's the 9 the nine CM housing is a bit restrictive. But for our purposes, for 300 horsepower, I guess it will give us the absolute best response out of all the stock turbos uh, that the Evo 4 to 9 engines have. We're going to maximize that advantage with a shorter uh, charge piping and smaller volu volume of charge piping. The pipe uh, from the turbo, it's 175, becomes 2 inches, and then it becomes 2 inches, and then when it gets close to the intercooler, there's a silicon hose that makes it uh, 3 inches, 2 inches to 3 inches uh, elbow reducer. And then after the intercooler, it is... Uh, 3 inches and it steps down to 2.75 to fit the throttle body best. Yeah, so that's the intercooler setup and charge piping. Cooler reservoir, we kind of, I mean the key advantage of a, an air to water setup is to put as much water as possible. The downsides to that is the more water you carry, it's the more heavier your car is. And one liter water is one kilo. If this if this build is a streetcar build, weight is not that much of a 
concern. Uh, the concern that we have is if you only have a limited space for the heat exchanger, it helps that you have a surplus of water. The more water you have, if you only have like 5 liters of water and then you boost the engine for like maybe 10, 10 seconds, 15 seconds uh, at one go, you'll easily heat up those 5 liters. But if you have let's say twice the capacity of water, let's say 10 liters, uh, you double your heat capacity because um, you have more water to heat up. So that allows more time for, for the engine to boost up without heat soaking the intercooler. With an air-to-air, -air, there's no easy way to get rid of heat soak. Uh, maybe have a bigger intercooler, uh, water sprayers on the intercooler. Uh, aside from that, there's nothing much you can do. But with with the air to water, you could just add more water, increase the capacity that way. If you have a big enough reservoir, what we did with our setup is we made our own reservoir with drainage piping. Um, as you can see here, it's a long. It's about I don't know two meters long. It's it's almost as long as the car's wide. Yeah, based on my computations, it's gonna uh, carry more than 10 liters. So that's about probably 12 to 15 kilos at the back, which is not bad because, again, you know, these front wheel drive base cars, even the Evo 4 to 9, um, they're a bit heavy on the front end. Uh, so the weight distribution is gonna be front bias. So that hurts turn in. It makes the car push or understeer a bit more if you have heavier weight on the front. So putting some weight in the back um, won't be so bad, I guess. And it's also centrally located it's on top of the gas tank. The polar polar moment of inertia won't be so bad because it's located in the middle of the car, within the wheelbase. Um, I hope you guys could continue to follow us. Uh, and please do like us and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Please like us on Facebook. Uh, the details are going to be around here. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. God bless. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care.